Thank you for joining our webinar session today. Today we're going to be talking about onboarding, uh, everything that you need to know about operationalization, tracking, and alerting your team on the onboarding process. So for those of you that are not familiar with me, I'm Cecilia Tavell. Uh, I work on customer success programs here at Tango and I enjoy working with all of you. If you'd like to uh, reach out to me directly, you can just email me, uh, Cecilia Tango.com, and I'll be happy to stay in touch. So for today's agenda, we're going to talk about capturing the right data into Tango to track onboarding, uh, setting up alerts for real-time notifications on any delays or risks in the progress, uh, creating consistent onboarding processes via success plays and also campaigns, and health and reports for tracking and measurement of your process. So if we think about onboarding, you know, what are we looking to improve? What are we looking to do? What are our goals? Um, so one of the kind of the, the easy ones to start to think about is, you know, how much time does it take to onboard a customer? And obviously we would want to improve that. Um, the sooner the customer onboards, the sooner they can start realizing value from the product they've purchased, um, et cetera. So we do want to use that as one of our key goals. Also, customer satisfaction and NPS. So, do you know we obviously want to improve the quality of our onboarding process. Um, we want to make sure customers come out of that um, being really happy and satisfied as well. The other thing uh, we want to focus is product usage adoption. So, after successful onboarding, we want to obviously have our customers use our product. Um, and use it deeply. So how do we get product and usage adoption and penetration um, to our end users? And then knowledge sharing. So, you know, in onboarding, how do we make sure that we educate and, and communicate our customers in the onboarding process and even post onboarding so that they continue learning and sharing the knowledge that they have with the rest of their team and their colleagues uh, on your product? So, if we start thinking about what data do we need to track, and some of this data you may already be tracking into Tango, and it's great. If something is missing in order for us to have a complete picture for the onboarding customer lifecycle journey, then we need to make sure that we kind of identify what those gaps are and get them in if we, if we need to. Um, so the easy one really is the lifecycle stage. Does the Tango know when your customer is onboarding versus when they're you know live and established? So we do want to understand um, you know, where they are in their journey. Uh, sometimes, you know, we use that um, an, an attribute value. So you simply pass to us uh, whether a customer's onboarding or live. Um, in other cases, um, there, we've seen situations where we don't have a specific attribute, but the onboarding um, journey is um, time-based or from the initial kind of contract sign date to, you know, maybe a month or two or three into their contract is the onboarding phase. I would say that is not the best approach to take, um, but if that's the only thing that you have into Tango, that is also uh, doable. Um, the other thing is uh, onboarding milestones. So how do we know how your customer is transitioning and, and journeying through their onboarding process? What are those key things or milestones that they need to achieve in the process? Also associated with that critical dates, are there critical dates that we need to be aware of? Uh, when do you start kind of tracking your onboarding? Is it when the contract is signed or is it, you know, from the kickoff call or whatever that process is? We do want to make sure we monitor dates um, so that at the end of onboarding, you guys can calculate how long it took. And then hopefully Totango will get that information from you um, so that we can know, you know, are we get improving as far as, you know, how, how fast we can get a customer onboarded. Usage and attributes. So we do want to track the right kind of usage. Um, you know, what what is the customer doing in your product? Um, what kinds of things do they need to um, achieve in product usage and also attributes? So, for example, if they need to integrate a few things before they can get started, do they need to download some kind of package or install some kind of package in their onboarding integration process? Um, and does Tango know about it? Have they installed package X or have they integrated with product Y? Um, and if those are key and critical to your onboarding, then, you know, knowing about that into Tango is also going to be critical. So think about, you know, those kinds of integration points or, you know, usage milestones that are key and, and critical for the onboarding process. Also, something to think about is what is the process like? Um, do you have a high touch model? Is there a low touch model where you can automate a few things and potentially use to Tango's campaigns for that to drive kind of the communication and information for the customer to 
uh, proceed and journey through their onboarding process on their own? Or do you have a dedicated team, an onboarding team and, and high touch kind of process where somebody project owns that, um, you know, relationship and all the milestones um, involved? So, you know, those are kind of a few approaches. How long does your onboarding take? Do you have larger customers that take a, a few months? Do you have smaller customers that can be pretty much self-sufficient and can get up and running within a week? Um, those are all key and important to track as well. Um, and again, the key milestones. What are we trying to uh, progress the customer through? What do they need to integrate? What do they need to do? And can some of these steps be automated? So even if it's a high touch model where you have somebody really handholding the customer, are there steps that can be automated? Are there steps with clear instructions and documentation? Can the customer complete them on their own? And can Totango kind of drive some of that communication based on knowing where the customer is in their journey to let them know what is the next step, send them instructions, links to videos, things like that, um, so that you can alleviate your team from being there um, and present um, during some of the kind of self-service type of uh, processes that can happen. Where is everything tracked and monitored? Do you have a system already that tracks this information? Is this data already being uh, sent to Tango? Can we get that data in in order to give you more visibility? Um, so think about any anything that potentially is you know is useful, but we don't have access to it yet. And again, does Tango have onboarding information about your customers? So if we don't, let's get it in. If an onboarding is an important piece for you to track. Um, and let's figure out how to uh, get that operationalized for your team. So something I wanted to highlight here, um, as some of you are aware, uh, we do have a fairly recent enhancement to Tatango, and we're going to be further enhancing it soon, so stay tuned. I will have a little uh, spoiler alert um, in the coming slides. Uh, but success flows are, you know, are ways to categorize our engagements with the customer and sort of create several buckets. You can create up to 12. So if you haven't added a success flow category and if you haven't really, um, you know, adjusted that for your use yet, I would encourage you to go into your settings or have your admin go into that and create the specific um, categories for your success flows. The one that's key here is the onboarding one. If you don't have that defined, I would say go and add a success flow, call it onboarding. And we have the little, um, you know, kind of spaceship kind of rocket as our onboarding um, icon. Um, and that way, when you do have your touch points, when you record something into Tango or you create a task, you can actually um, designate that to the onboarding category. You can do the same thing when you build your success plays and your campaigns. That way you can really easily identify what type of engagements your team has with the customer and potentially alert in internally if there is an onboarding customer and hasn't had a, an engagement or a conversation in, in, in like, you know, the first initial phases of onboarding, uh, which could be an issue. And I have a, a, an example of that coming up as well. Things to kind of think about, you know, as, as you start tracking things, reporting and visualizing information is going to be key and something that can re our reporting uh, capability can help you with. So basically reports are built from segments. So you would build segments. And in this particular example, I have three different segments for onboarding that is in good health, average health and, and poor health. And I also slice it by, you know, an onboarding assessment, which is kind of an internal, um, you know, assessment that is kind of subjective by contract value and also by success manager. So you can do the same. And another thing that can be done is also if you have uh, tracking for your milestone and stages um, of your onboarding. So in this particular case, we have a few different steps. We have kickoff call, requirements approval, integration, data audit, et cetera. And those are against segments. And this is visualized in a report. So you can actually see what, um, you know, what is the distribution between different milestone uh, phases in, in your process? So it looks like we have 30, 36 customers that are still in the kickoff call phase. And, and we have 60 that are kind of bottleneck in configuration. So this gives you kind of an idea of, oh, okay, where do we need to sort of get more resources or more health? Maybe configuration takes so much time. Maybe it's resource um you know, really, really high on resource consumption. Uh, what, do, what do we need to do? Do we need to hire more people to help with configuration? Do we need to provide more documentation? So it gives you some ways to, to start thinking about where you need to improve and, and what can be done. So reports can help you with that. And also identifying uh, bottlenecks. So these are all different um, milestone phases in the process. 
Uh, you can take a look and see how many customers, um, you know, from each kind of start date. Looks like, you know, this is kind of an old screenshot, but it looks like, you know, in, in June of 2014, we had four customers um, from that date. We're still in, in, in kickoff call phase, which means, you know, we're already in 2015. Somehow we never even had the kickoff call. So clearly allows you to see where your bottlenecks are and, and see, you know, where you need to focus to help improve. And also when you work with your team, so if you're a team lead or a team manager, when you're having a conversation with the CSM or even the CSM themselves can look at themselves in the report and then take a look and see, um, you know, what what their um, kind of milestone chart looks like. How many customers do they have within each bucket? And again, it looks like the heavy distribution is on the kickoff call and configuration. So clearly those two um, phases of onboarding are you know, a bit problematic where we need to focus. Another one is a data audit where we need to make sure that the data is consistent and clean is an area where we need to focus and improve. Um, once you have kind of the segmentation, um, visualizing via health console, and the health console is part of the executive console in the left navigation panel. And this is an example from a customer where they basically mapped out the health console based on the kind of the, the transitions from kind of phase to phase. So, uh, the first one is new customers. So in their 21 days of engagement with, with the product, then once their onboarding is complete, their, their 21 to 30 day, um, you know, journey, then post on post onboarding 31 to 60, and then pre-established 61 to 90, and then established. And what this allows you to do is to see how each of these kind of um, buckets of customers are doing and, and see, you know, in which phase or which time frame. Are they the most problematic? So it looks like, you know, in the new customers, we have a little bit of a problem. It looks like once they're already established, they do really well. They're at 89. So it allows you to visualize and see, you know, the health and see uh, where you may need to focus a little bit more um, to help improve, you know, maybe the, the, something um, needs to happen within that time frame that is problematic for customers, for example, in, in the particular case for post onboarding, when they're just onboarded between their 31 to 60 days with the product. Um, somehow, you know, they're not doing so great. So how do we improve that? Operational, uh, operationalization via success place. So once you have the kind of the clear process, you can uh, make sure that you automate some of the steps as far as creating a process for your team to follow. Um, maybe not all steps deem a success play, but um, the key critical ones that you want to track and make sure that they're consistently and automatically delivered to your team so that they know what they need to do. Um, should be operationalized via success place. Um, and some of these could be during onboarding and also final kind of steps in onboarding and post onboarding. Um, so in this particular case, there's a final onboarding check-in, um, you know, at, after 30 days, CSM follows up. That's one of the tasks. And the other one is a new client, um, you know, you know, in their 21 days of engagement and there's an onboarding schedule um, kind of process that is assigned to the team. Also, something that can be done with success plays is uh, an ability to, to make sure you're proactive early. So if there is a problem with um, onboarding, um, and it can be anything, really something wasn't integrated, something wasn't installed, uh, or maybe it's simply taking too long. So in this particular case, uh, the onboarding phase is, is dragging past 60 days, which in this particular case is a risk. So um, there's going to be an onboarding success play, delayed, to have an escalation meeting with sales and operations to devise a plan to, you know, get better or, you know, get involved and, and, and help the customer proceed. So escalating early is good. What you can also do if you do uh, some sort of surveying and it doesn't have to be a super formal process, it can simply be an email with, with, where you ask for feedback from a customer. In this particular case, once you get the score from a customer, you can actually take extra care on those type of, uh, you know, scores that are below satisfactory, maybe below nine or whatever the threshold you're, that you're comfortable with. Um, and basically what this success play is doing is looking at customers that have onboarded less than 30 days ago and, and have a given an, an NPS score less than nine. Um, and we want to make sure that the CSM watches them closely. This is a task for them to make sure that they're on top of this customer for the next few days to make sure that, um, you know, they improve the score and, and give the customer extra attention. Alerting is also critical. So this is a segment. Basically, what you can do is set up a, a segment to, um, you know, same thing. If, if the onboarding is delayed, 
past 60 days. We're looking at contract star data over 60 days. And you can use the Tango's trigger mechanism to alert. So you can actually notify by email. So you'll actually get an email here is risk at tango.com, but it can be an internal email that you guys use. And whenever there's a customer that enters the kind of the, the delayed phase past 60 days, there's going to be an email going in to the inbox of the individuals on, on, on that email. So that's something that you can also do uh, and get alerted in real time when this situations come up. So this is my spoiler alert. Um, this is something we'll be announcing soon, but the because we do already have the success flows, we also have added a new capability that will be announced pretty soon, um, is an ability to segment by the type of success flow. So if we're looking at you know our last onboarding um, engagement with the customer, if I'm asking the system to show me all customers that have had or have not had any onboarding engagements, in over 14 days, they're paying customers and they're onboarding. So obviously it's an issue if I haven't had, you know, if a customer's onboarding and in over two weeks, nobody has spoken with them or no one has noted that they have interacted with a customer. I want to make sure that I either set up an alert or I schedule a success play to make sure that, you know, there's something happening, uh, maybe some sort of escalation. Um, but it does allow me to ask these questions. Um, and onboarding is just one of the success flows. It could be a QBR. Maybe there hasn't been a QBR in over, um, you know, 90 days or six, you know, six months, whatever the period is for your for your organization. Or if there hasn't been any kind of um, executive um, engagement where we haven't talked to the C-level executive in over, you know, three months. So those can all be questions that we can ask now with this new capability that's coming with success flow. So stay tuned for announcements on that. And also uh, another report example is tra tracking team performance. So this one is looking at all customers that went live in the past 120 days and breaking it down by their NPS score, by their health and their success manager. So we can see, you know, um, how many customers do we have going live on any given point, also broken out by how satisfied they are by NPS and by success manager, and also seeing how they're doing in health. So those are kind of visualization processes and pieces that you can infuse after you have the data uh, segmented. Now, if we kind of switch gears a little bit and talk about the, the low touch model and if there's any steps that can be automated with campaigns, again, campaigns, if you're not familiar, is it Tatango's way to send one to one uh, email communications um, just with Tatango standalone without having to leverage any other system. Um, and if we think about what kind of is a good way to do that, you know, some of the initial steps could be automated. So a welcome email with training and instructions is easy to do. Final steps like con congratulations on go live um, with, you know, a link to a survey potentially. And then any steps, um, you know, post going live, you know, maybe a 30 day, 60 day, 90 days post go live check ins. Any in-between steps, uh, any kind of configuration, integration steps, something you can deliver to the customer's inbox to let them know how to integrate or how to install something um, to kind of proceed in their journey. And then things like you did X, but now do Y. So if there's some sort of process that they need to, uh, to perform, installing, downloading, integrating, um, creating um, new users or creating documents, whatever those things are in your product, you can say now you've done, you know, you've downloaded a document. Now, you know, here's how you can share a document. Maybe just giving them some tips on how to do more things with what they've already done. And then similarly, um, kind of the opposite of that, if they didn't do something critical. So, for example, you know, the customer has been with us for two weeks. They have not integrated X. And the, the integration of X is super critical if they cannot proceed or gain any value from our product, if they don't. And then what you can do if they haven't integrated that piece of um, software or some kind of package, uh, you can send them a tip, uh, maybe just needed more instructions or guidance or invite them to a webinar uh, and give them some reasons of why they need to do it because they are going to gain ROI from uh, completing this process. So give them something to uh, incite them to to proceed and move forward. And that can easily be done with campaigns. Um, and this is just an example of what some of the campaigns look like for a customer. So basically you can uh, drive your onboarding process through the campaign automation. So you can do, um, you know, 91 day in the example here, day post onboarding check-in. So you're checking in with the customer after they've been onboarded for a few days. 
you're sending them information about some new features. Um, so these are all good examples uh, for automating uh, kind of the campaign process uh, for onboarding. And this one is specifically is an onboarding campaign. For example, if our product, um, you know, deals with document creation, document sharing, this is an onboarding campaign to new users to use document um, documents. So in this particular logic, if you look at the applied criteria on the bottom left of this um, image, we're looking at customers that um, are fairly new with us. So in the last 90 days, they're paying and they have only created a document, you know, less than one time. So, you know, they, they haven't created really any documents. And on the right side, we have a preview of our segment. We have 18 users across five accounts. And that's how much revenue is represented by that. So we can actually email them something very specific to these end users and give them a reason to start creating documents. Um, and that's part of kind of your campaign um, ideas that you can leverage. Uh, so with that, I'm going to skip out of the actual PowerPoint and, and we're kind of approaching towards the end of the hour. Uh, I just wanted to give you a couple more um, images here and, and, and specifically in, in the, you know, I have a webinar folder for myself. I have some uh, specific folders within that folder. Um, and I'm here looking at the specific um, campaigns for onboarding. And this is end user segments. So basically you have an end user uh, segment that you create and the logic is already defined. So I have my onboarding campaign to new users to use documents. And once you have built your logic in a segment, which you can absolutely do, um, you can launch directly into a campaign from here. You can do the opposite. You can start with campaigns and just build your logic directly there. But I find it easier sometimes to think through your logic in a segment, save that segment, maybe revisit it if you need to, and then you can actually launch into your campaign directly from here and start building it. Um, the other thing that I mentioned is now that with the success flow categorization, I would encourage you to make sure that you have the right categories already available and set up. And if you don't request that your admin does that, through the settings, there's a section under settings that allows you to define your success flows. And in this particular case, I would have an onboarding uh, success um, uh, flow for my campaign. I can build my campaign from here and kind of specify what is the custom message to my users. So that's something that is really easily achieved uh, to help you alleviate some of the kind of the time consumed for, for your CSMs or for yourself to write emails that are basically consistently following a process, you can really infuse that into kind of more of an automated process through campaigns. Um, and I have some, some examples of the types of emails, you know, welcome new users, recently onboarded survey check-in, integration checkpoints, all of these can be done through, um, you know, campaigns. The other thing um, that I wanted to look at really quick is, for example, our onboarding, um, these are account level, um, segments. So in this particular case, we had an onboarding is delayed. And this is what I mentioned that we can look at the contract start date. Uh, and if that's kind of the, a critical time frame, and you want to make sure your customers onboarded within 60 days, if they're not, uh, hopefully you're already aware of the situation way in advance. Uh, but once this period um, approaches, you can use the trigger mechanism and specify an email address. So here's kind of a risk to Tango that will deliver this alert to the team. You can also operationalize this. So launching directly into a success play and specifying and assigning particular tasks. In this particular case, it can be onboarding or it could potentially be an escalation type of success flow where you're going to have kind of a, a more critical um, kind of internal uh, process defined to escalate this particular customer because you know that a customer that doesn't onboard within a specific time frame is at risk for churn. So this is your way to automate that um, as well within success place. And the other things that we talked about earlier are reports. So once you have the segments created, you can easily create some uh, cool reports to visualize um, information for onboarding. So in this particular case, I'm just going to look at uh, onboarding, uh, recently onboarded status. And I showed you a screenshot of that, but basically I have the number of customers that have recently onboarded. I can also see the trend so I can hover over the time, um, and see how many customers have onboarded on each particular date. And this is looking at the past 30 days 
and I can look at my breakdown by contract value, health and success manager. All of this is clickable so I can actually see, click on run and see which customers have onboarded in, in, in the last um, you know, 120 days, which is kind of the time frame that I'm looking at as far as my recently onboarded customers. So reporting, if you have questions on reporting, this is a great way to visualize. Again, you have to build your segments first because they are the building blocks for reports. So we're approaching the end here. Um, you know, I wanted to see if anybody has a question. Um, let me take the question that I have right now. Um, and if there's anything else that we missed or don't have time for, you can reach out to me again after the session as well if you have any more uh, specific questions or you can uh, touch base with your CSM. Um, so I do have a question here. It's asking, will you show us how to set up milestone tracking on this call? So basically, um, the, the thing is, if you already have your milestones tracked somewhere, so let's say maybe you have uh, an internal process where you document that, like maybe it's an, an Excel sheet, or maybe you have something um, in, in Salesforce that you track if Salesforce is your CRM. Basically, Tango just needs to know what those things are. And a lot of times those can be managed as attributes into Tango. So for example, integrated product Y, and it can be a Boolean, yes or no. Um, and you can also associate a date. So kickoff call completed, yes or no and perhaps have the date for kickoff call if you want to track dates for each particular milestone. So those would be kind of two attributes, one for did they complete something, yes or no, and the other one, what is the date of the completion for that particular milestone. Uh, so basically think about the high level, what are the critical milestones? Do you already have them tracked somewhere? Um, if you do, and if it's easy to map that information into Tango, if it's simply coming in from Salesforce, it's very easy. Um, if it's somewhere else, we can manually add those attributes in settings and your admin can help you with that. Or you can do it via the integration hub. So if it's somewhere already available, um, instead of doing it manually, uh, integration hub can be helpful as well. It's simply loading a CSV file into Tango with that data. So those are a few options for you. I hope that that helps um, answer your question on that. Um, so there is another question. Um, so someone's asking, what would be the criteria for a welcome email campaign? That's a great question. Um, so basically what we do for our welcome email campaigns is usually just say, um, if the customer's first activity date is in the last, you know, how many days? So it could be, you know, the last three days, the last seven days. Um, and so basically we know that this is a new user, a new, a new person in the system. So we want to send them a welcome. Um, and obviously you want to decide, are you sending this to everybody? Do you have free customers as well in trial that you want to welcome? Or are you looking at only paying customers? So let's say you want to make sure that you're targeting, you know, if it's a paying customer outreach, you're looking at paying customers, you're looking at first activity data in the last X number of days, whatever you're comfortable with. And then for, that's basically it. Um, you know, if there are specific lifecycle journeys or any other attributes that you're sending to us that we need to infuse into that logic, you can add them in. But at the high level, just paying customer first activity date in the last uh, so many days. And in your welcome email, you, know, you can include, you know, just some nice warm and fuzzies. Welcome aboard. Um, I'm your CSM or here's your team. And then some links to, you know, information and maybe training. So I know we just ran over and I really want to appreciate everyone for coming. I hope to see you again uh, at our upcoming webinar and I hope this was a helpful session for you and take care.